Hello and welcome to today's lesson on data analysis. We're going to be covering topics under the Algebra 2 Standard 3.1 A, B, and C. And then we're also going to be looking at questions and the lesson in Study Island called Data Analysis. So remember, please be taking notes, especially today. There's going to be some key things that we have to remember in order to tell the difference between a linear, quadratic, a logarithmic, and exponential function. And if you remember these things, these problems will be pretty easy. And then if you also, you can pause at the beginning of the question, um, work the problem out, see what you get for the answer, and then that way you can get yourself a gauge on how well you are doing and what else you still need to learn. So I'm so glad that you're here, and let's go ahead and look at some notes. In these problems, you're going to be asked to identify different types of models from a table. And so for the ones that you could be asked to identify are linear, quadratic, exponential, and logarithmic. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the y's. And if it's linear, if you subtract the y's, if you take second term minus the first term, third y term minus the second y term, which is what's listed out here, if it's linear, every single one of those differences is going to be the same. If it's quadratic, the first difference is going to be different. So it's not linear. But if you go and subtract the second difference, which they're doing over here, they're taking the second difference minus the first, the third difference minus the second, and when they do that, that difference ends up being all the same. So if you do it once and it's the same, it's linear. Do it twice and it's the same, it's quadratic. If you do it twice and it's different, then try taking the ratio or try dividing the second y term by the first y term. But divide the third y term by the second y term. Here they've listed out all the ratios, all the division problems, and when they divide, they out the two decimals, they get the same answer, which is when you're rounding, that's pretty good. So that means it's exponential. Now for logarithmic, logarithmic, the y values are going to increase rapidly and then level off. So here if you look at the differences, it's increasing a lot and then it starts to level off. Um, Logarithmic also won't follow these other three. So if you've ruled out these other three, then your last choice is logarithmic. It's also handy to know some parent graphs. So if the shape of, you're going to have a bunch of points, and then if the shape of those points is linear, then you need to know that that makes a line. If it's a U shape, then you need to know that's quadratic. If it's a bit of a snake, you need to know that's cubic. And if it starts out flat and then starts to increase rapidly, that's exponential. When if it increases rapidly and then starts to level out, that's logarithmic. And these other ones are good to know too, but these are the five that you really are going to need to know for the following questions. This problem here gives me a table that shows the time elapsed and the speed of a bluebird, and it wants to know if I were to graph these and draw a line of best fit, which one of these would be the best model? A quadratic, a linear, exponential, or logarithmic? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to calculate the distance just like I talked about in the notes. So I'm going to take 602 minus 3.01 and when I subtract those two numbers I get 3.01 and then I'm going to take 7.78 minus 6.02 and I get 1.76 so right away I see it's not going to be linear, but I'm going to keep going so that I can calculate the second difference too. So 9.03 minus 7.78 is 1.25. And then 10 minus 9.03 is 0 0.97. If it's quadratic, if I calculate the difference of these four numbers, then they'll be the same. So if I take 1.76 minus 3.01, that's going to give me negative 1.25. And then if I take 1.25 minus 1.76, that's going to give me negative 0.75. 
0 0.51. So I can see right away that it's not going to be quadratic either because these two numbers don't match. So then I'm going to try the ratios. And so the ratios mean I'm going to take the second term and divide it by the first y term. So 6.02 over 3.01, that divides and gives me 2. And then 7.78 divided by 6.02 is 1.29. So those numbers don't match. So it's not quadratic. It's not linear. The ratios don't match. So it's not exponential. So it is going to be logarithmic. It starts increasing pretty rapidly. It goes up by three, but then it starts to taper off. And at the end, it's not even going up by one. So that's logarithmic. Okay, so this problem is similar. It gives us a table that um, talks about how every spring Marcus does landscaping work to earn extra money. And the table shows the amount of money he earned after several weeks of landscaping. And it wants to know, is this exponential, linear, constant, or quadratic? So first thing I'm going to do is look at the differences. 600 minus 100 is 500. 900 minus 600 is 300. So right away I see it's not going to be linear because the first differences don't match. But I want to continue calculating these differences so that I can see if the second difference is the same. So this time 300 minus 500 is negative 200. 100 minus 300 is negative 200. All right, it could be quadratic. Negative 100 minus 100 is negative 200. And if you get confused with the negative symbols, it's important to keep them straight, so you can use a calculator to check yourself. And then negative 300 minus a negative 100 is also negative 200. So the second differences all match, so that's going to be quadratic. This time in number three, instead of giving us a table, they give us a graph. So this graph, if it was a square root, it would have a shape like this. If it was an absolute value, it would have a V-shape. Exponential would start flat and then increase, and then linear would be a line. So this one, if you, the data generally just goes in a straight line, so it's going to be linear. Okay, this question gives us a table and wants us to write an equation of the line of best fit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these and I realize they're all lines. So that means that when the number by the x is going to be the slope number. So to get a rough idea of what the slope number could be is I'm going to go ahead and take um, two rows and I'm just going to pick the two first two rows and I'm going to subtract my y's on top and subtract my x's on the bottom. That's your slope formula. And apply it to this problem. So 26 minus 0.13 minus 24.67 is 1.46 and that's going to be divided by negative 5. 10 minus 15 is negative 5 and when I do that division I get a decimal negative 0 0.292 and so I'm looking that means I'm looking for a slope the number in front of x where that is similar to this decimal. And so A, it's positive, so it can't be A, it has to be negative. B, it's 28, I'm looking for something less than zero, so it can't be B. C, it's a positive 28, so it's not even negative. And then Y is negative 0.28. Here, 0.29 is pretty similar to that, and I've already rolled out my other choices, so my answer here is D. Here they give us another graph that they want us to decide is the shape more similar to the quadratic parent graph, exponential, linear, absolute value. Remember, quadratic would be a U. It's not a U. Exponential, it kind of starts out flat and then rises, which this one kind of does. And then linear, it would just be a definite straight line. And this one has a bit of a curve. And then absolute value would be a V. And that's definitely not a V. So my best answer here is B, exponential. Okay, this problem here, they give us all of the data points on the scatter plot, and they want us to draw a line of best fit. 
Remember, a line of best fit mean, isn't connecting the dots. It's taking the average of the dots. So it's drawing the straightest line that you can if it's linear, where you um, have about the same amount of dots, data points, on the top of the, the line of best fit as you do the bottom. So something like this would work out. So I went ahead and sketched it, and so I'm just going to check to see which one of these equations is the closest to my orange sketch here. So A, there's no number at the end, that means I'm going to start at 0, and then my slope is 3. So that means I'm going to rise up 3 and run 1. I'm going to put a dot. And I'm going to go ahead and put it, I'm going to do that one more time. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. And this line is going to go steeper and put most of the data points below. So it's not going to be A. The next equation, B, starts at 0 and there's a slope of 1. There's that invisible 1 in front of the X. So it means I'm going to go up 1, starting at 0. I'm going to go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. And if I continue to do that and plot more and more points, I see that this line is going out like this. And all of the data points are above. Well, that's not a very good average. So that's not, it's not going to be B either. <clears throat> okay, so next C, my slope is 2. So that means I'm going to go up, starting at 0, I'm going to go up 2, over to the right 1. Up 2, over to the right 1. Up 2, over the right 1. And as I continue to do that, it falls pretty close onto that orange line I had sketched out before. So C is going to be my answer. This next problem takes some familiar, familiarity with an exponential equation. So here, this is an exponential scatter plot because it starts decreasing very rapidly and then starts to level off. And so if I look at it, it says in the problem that it starts at about initial mass of about 20 grams of each sample. So that means that there's going to be a 20 out front like there is in every example here. And I can already tell by the shape that it's going to be exponential. So that means I'm going to have an exponent of x. So I know right away that it's not going to be d. So the next thing I'm going to do is to see what happens with my y numbers. So on zero, day zero, it is at 20 according to the problem or approximately 20. On day one it's about 16. On day two it's at about 10-ish. And day three it's at about six. And these are just rough estimates. And day four, it's at about three, and so on. So then I want to look, okay, the number that's being raised to the x power in, is a half, a quarter, and two. So right, I want to look to see, do these numbers cut in half each time? Do they cut in a quarter each time? Or do they cut in double each time, times two? So they def they're decreasing, so they definitely don't times two. And here, a quarter of 20 is 5, and half is 10. Well, this is closer to half. A quarter of 16 is 4, and half is 8. Well, 10 is closer to a half. A quarter of 10 is 2 and a half. Half is 5. 6 is closer to 5. And then half of 6 is 3. So this is the closest is cutting in half each day. So my answer is A. In this problem, they're looking at how Petunia's vegetable garb garden and the amount of rain that it received how high her tomato plants are growing and so they have this scatter plot and then they went ahead and put in this line of best fit and so we're looking at that line of best fit or trend line and so they're saying based on that you can make predictions and how tall should her tomato plant grow if they get 11 centimeters of rain so at 11 centimeters of rain I'm gonna go up and if I continue out this line at 11 centimeters, it's going to be around 9 centimeters tall. So my answer is going to be C.
Okay, in this problem, it's the path of a soccer ball when a soccer ball, when a soccer player kicks it, and it wants to know what is the height of the ball after four tenths seconds. So I go to four tenths, and I go up, and it is a ran, it's a little over three meters, and so but not quite three and a half meters. So it's going to be my answer B. Type of problems you might see are different types of correlation. And correlation is how well two things are related. So like the more hours you study is going to correlate to how good of test scores you get. Whereas something that would not cut correlate is how many hours you study to how much you weigh. Those aren't really, they don't affect each other at all. So you could have strong correlation. And this is an example of strong correlation where they're all pretty close together. Or you could have weak correlation where they're kind of more spaced out and not really all close together and making a line. And then you can also have positive and negative. So positive correlation, they're all going to be going in an uphill line and negative correlation, they're all going to be going in a downhill line. So here in this scatter plot, it's showing positive correlation. The, this line is going uphill. It's also showing strong correlation, but that's not an option, so it's the your answer is A. This correlation here, it's going downhill, so that's going to be negative correlation, so that's going to be my answer D. Here, these points are pretty close to being in a straight line already, with a, just a few altered, so that is really strong correlation. You can see a, almost a perfect straight line there. So my answer is A. I hope, thank you for joining us today and I hope you learned something new.